Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Some sinuses in the neck are congenitally present, but some sinuses are acquired in the later life due to variety of causes. Among these sinuses, some sinuses tend to persist, which signifies requirement for further investigation. Today, I am going to talk about chronic persistent discharging sinus of the neck. So what is a sinus? The Latin word sinus means a hollow. Sinus may be defined as a blind tract lined by granulation tissue leading from an epithelial surface down into the tissue. It is different from fistula. Fistula has opening on both sides but sinus is a blind tract with opening only on one side. Now what are the causes of some acquired sinuses in the neck. It may be due to a spontaneous rupture of a deep-seated infection. A skin infection can also lead to a sinus formation. Odontogenic infection is an important cause of sinus in the neck region. Actually most of the cervicofacial sinuses are odontogenic origin, that is originating from the teeth infection. Inadequate surgical drainage of an abscess can lead to a sinus formation. Trauma is another cause. Traumatic injury of cheek and parotid can lead to a cutaneous parotid fistula. Some specific infections like actinomycosis, tuberculosis can lead to a sinus in the neck. Submandibular sialolith can produce a sinus at the submandibular region. Rarely, large cysts like dentigenous cysts or keratocysts can produce sinus in the neck. So these are the acquired causes of sinus formation in the neck. Now why some of these sinuses tend to persist? When there is a persistent sinus in the neck, we should be aware of some underlying etiologies like presence of a foreign body, example suture material, presence of necrotic tissue underneath like sequestrum, insufficient drainage, Malignancy is a cause of persistent sinus. It is usually a squamous cell carcinoma. If a person is irradiated for head neck cancer, then a sinus may fail to heal due to formation of dense fibrosis. Patient factor like malnutrition is another cause. And specific infections like tuberculosis and actinomycosis should be looked for. Actually, tubercular lymphadenitis of the neck goes through five stages and one of the stages is sinus formation. You can see my another video in this regard. So how to investigate a case of persistent sinus in the neck? First, we have to take proper history from the patient. If it is odontogenic origin, we have to take history of any dental pain or dental caries any orofacial infection history and history of previous surgical procedure. Clinically, both extraoral and intraoral examination should be performed. On inspection, we should see the location of the sinus, its number, its size, type of discharge, any scarring or pigmentation around the sinus area. Intraorally, all teeth should be looked for dental caries, periodontal infection, fracture, and mobility. Palpation of the sinus should be done for any tenderness, thickening or induration. Opinion from dental department can be sought for. Heart palate, soft palate, tongue, floor of the mouth should be examined. As I have already mentioned that odontogenic infection is an important cause of sinus in the cervicofacial region. So we have to differentiate whether the sinus is odontogenic origin or non-odontogenic origin. Odontogenic infection can be suspected from history of toothache, clinical location of the sinus and palpation of the sinus tract. Labial and buccal sulcus should be palpated for a fibrous tract. The attachment of the tract to the jaw may indicate the site of infection. The investigations we can do are CBC, pass for culture sensitivity and AFB staining, X-ray of the involved region to rule out osteomyelitis, retained foreign body. X-ray OPG can be done to identify any dental pathology. 
biopsy from the edge of the sinus can be done. Now come to the treatment of chronic persisting discharging sinus of the neck. The treatment is according to the underlying etiology. The sinus tract may need to be excised. Antibiotics should be governed according to culture sensitivity testing. If odontogenic infection is confirmed, then offending teeth are extracted. In case of tuberculosis, appropriate course of anti-tubercular drug should be prescribed. Anemia of the patient should be corrected and if the patient is malnutritious, then his nutrition should be improved. So this is all from chronic persisting discharging sinus of the neck. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.